The MMA Discussion Podcast, episode number five. I'm here with Adam Carr and Chris Shumana. Chris, what's up? How's it going? Adam. Yo. All right, Adam, you are going to sound a little off base today because we hear that you're sick. Hope you get better. Uh, let's get started. We were just talking about right now. Let's actually get into where we were at. We were talking about the uh, MMA Discussion Wrestling Tournament that we have here, and we're down to the final eight. Start off with 32, we're down to the 8. We have Kevin Randleman versus John Jones. Uh, Brock Lesnar versus Chael Sonnen going down today. Get your votes in. Uh, Randy Couture versus Cain Velasquez, which I think in, in the quarterfinals here is the most intriguing matchup. And then Mark Coleman versus George St. Pierre. My favorite being the Randy Couture, Cain Velasquez one. I can't wait to tomorrow to get that one done. That's pretty. That sounds fun to me. What do you think? Adam, go. <laughs> oh, me, son of a bitch. Um, I, I think the uh, more inter- intriguing matchup myself is the, based on purely how the fans are going to vote, the Lesnar Chael matchup. I, I just, I honestly think that Kane's a pretty easy win for, not a pretty easy, but an easier win for his matchup than either Brock or Chael will be for their matchup. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. And up to this point, since we're recording this the night before, I'm kind of shocked at how close uh, the Randleman Jones matchup is. I thought Jones would just run and run away with that matchup, and up to this point, it's been fairly competitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Brock Lesnar. Uh, I mean, he faced who did he face? Dan, Han- Dan Henderson and Demetrius Johnson, two you know very, very, very qualified wrestlers to be. Two guys that I thought should beat him, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I thought I, I thought that uh, Brock would probably lose to Demetrius. I was surprised how he blew Demetrius out of the water completely. He beat uh, uh, what did he do? Yeah, seventy three t- votes to twenty. That's a that's a pretty good ass whooping as far as votes go. And uh, if if the John Jones Kevin Randleman matchup was close, I feel the Randy Couture Kane Velasquez one should be close. I mean, just looking at Randy's. Uh, you know, career, you know, especially when you look at how uh, influential he was in the sport and, and how he used his wrestling the way he used it. I feel uh, that it, it should make it a very competitive matchup with a guy like Kane who hasn't been around long, even though he has shown that he uh, struggled very with dominant. Nobody. He struggled with who? Struggles with nobody. Uh, Kane? Yeah, he has. he's had zero struggles so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's He true. almost lost to Bigfoot. Bigfoot had him in that first match. <laughs> he pulled on purpose. He was going to loop him up for a submission. <laughs> we all know it. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're laughing like I said something funny. <laughs> oh, well, nothing. No. Shields was on his way to beating GSP, too, right, yeah. Chris? I mean, uh, I mean... If he'd have fought the striking god, it would have been a totally different story, right? Oh, I mean, why the hell do you think he's a heavyweight? You look at him, he's clearly soft. He can make it to the one set. <laughs> oh, man. Chris, you don't even like this tournament. You, you, thought, you, threw, you threw any legitimacy out the second Jake Shields lost, right? The second Jake Shields lost in the first, like, prelim rounds. That's when this tournament just needs to go out the window. <laughs> now, personally, me looking at this final four, um, I can see why people want to pick Kevin Randall over Jones. Final eight. And we talked about this before we got into it, which is the big slam over Fedor. That sticks out like a sore thumb in everyone's mind, and that's why they think it should be something special. Um, mm-hmm. Personally, I would pick John Jones over Kevin Randleman, but that one is pretty close. I'm a little surprised, but I think John Jones completely dominates Kevin Randleman's wrestling. Uh, Brock Lesnar, Chael Sonnen. Um, I liked Brock Lesnar until about five, like Brock Lesnar's wrestling. I still like Brock Lesnar, but five minutes ago, Adam convinced me that he's basically just a can when it comes to wrestling. And exactly <laughs> what I said, word for word, exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Shale's son should beat him, but I don't know. I don't know how the fans would vote. I'm very curious to see that one. Randy Couture came Velasquez. Um... Again, that's another one I really don't know who I pick. I think Kane's going to win overall when it comes down to the fan votes, but that should be a really interesting one. Mark Coleman, GSP. I think GSP is just going to completely beat Coleman. 
Um, you want to I mean, if you look prediction. at the if you look at the votes for GSP versus Tito Ortiz, it, it <laughs> thus far it's it holds the record for the eighty to four. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> it holds the re- I've, look. Look at every look at every vote. Look at every result. It, it holds the record thus far in this tournament for the biggest blowout, like the biggest just dominating like victory of all. And Chael beat Frankie Edgar ninety one to sixteen. That's a big one. Uh, but when you look at percentile of, of like how many votes have over which, 80 to 4 is higher than 91 to 16. So it wins by that big of a margin. I thought it was insane. I mean, uh, they get, nobody gave Tito a chance at all. <laughs> it's so bad. He beat Jens. I mean, in the opening round, there was that. By 30 to 4, yeah. I mean, imagine if this was GSP against Jens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That'd be so bad. Oh, it'd be so bad. You get like one sympathy vote. <laughs> yeah, Jen, just because you know, I mean, he's such a nice guy. Yeah, it'd be like a hundred to something, one maybe. That'd be bad. That might have held the record. Who knows? But uh, GSP. I mean, Mark Coleman. I, I'm glad that he's there. A lot of people have complained about him being there. I'm glad he beat Koscheck. Not because I don't like Koscheck, but I just felt that again, it, it, the same thing. You know, Josh Koscheck's had a career as opposed to Ben Askren, but Mark Coleman just did so much early on. And I've been watching all these early UFC, like I said uh, on this podcast before, I've been watching on Fight Pass all of these events uh, from the UFC in chronological order because I never watched all of the events in their in, like in their entirety. I just watched, uh, you know, certain fights that that made a difference in in the sport and stuff like that. And but and you see Mark Coleman fighting all these dudes, and man, when he first started off, he was just a savage. He really was. He was just getting on dudes, and just you could hear every punch so impactfully. It was just so insane. And uh, you know, he was just tossing dudes around, and it was just it's it's fun to watch. And I've been a Mark Coleman fan, and I became a Mark Coleman fan after watching him in Pride more than anything. But now that I've watched his early UFC days, it makes me even a bigger fan. Um, I just feel like overall he's had a good career, and 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 he's been influential more so than a lot of these guys uh, in wrestling because of of how impactful he was so early on in the, in the UFC. Um, have um have either of you guys seen the documentary The Smashing Machine? I love it. That's yeah, a great documentary. Yeah, I love it too. I mean, it's a good one. I, I was surprised that uh, uh, that who beat him? I forgot. Let me see. Oh, Josh Koscheck. Josh Koscheck barely beat Mark Kerr. Uh, I thought Mark Kerr should have won that one. But yeah, I thought so too. Mark Kerr is such. I mean, the greatest story of what could have been. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's kind of what happened. That you know what goes along with it. I mean, it's just a big what if about that dude. Mm-hmm. But I, I thought it was uh, I, I'm excited about these final eight. Uh, I, you know, it's the next day on uh, April 16th, and uh, so I have the votes for Kevin Randleman and John Jones. I won't give it away. Brock Lesnar versus Chael Sonnen going on today. Get your votes in. Uh, who do you think wins that one, though? Adam. But it should or would? Uh, I yeah no. Give me like if you had to vote, who do you vote for? Brock Lesnar, Chael Sonnen. I vote for Sonnen. But part of me thinks Lesnar might be able to pull it off based off, I don't know, fan votes. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Lesnar, I feel like a couple of these are fan uh, but even the GSP ones, but not all of them. I mean, even I think that if GSP won, I wouldn't have a single damn problem with it. Um, uh, yeah, I would, I mean, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, GSP in many people's eyes is the favorite, so it makes sense. Uh, Chael Sonnen versus Brock Lesnar. I mean, uh, Chael has uh, has has had a quite a career with the UFC. Even uh, you know, I mean, just being so impactful as well. Lesnar was impactful financial sense and in an excitement sense as well. Just like Sonnen was, because I mean, you always tuned in to fight that dude fight, watch that dude fight. I mean, and uh, the same goes for Chael. I mean, they both have huge fan bases. I think I honestly think that. That this Lesnar Chael Sonnen one will probably get the most votes of of any matchup that we'll have. Maybe other than Cain Velasquez and GSP, if those two meet up. Um, but I think that Lesnar and Chael Sonnen will probably get the most votes, like all together. I you know I think Brock Lesnar is going to win that because I'm noticing a trend that the heavier guys are winning a lot of these matchups, and I'm thinking that a lot of the people are voting based on if they were to wrestle each other, who would win. And naturally, more often than not, the heavier guy's going to get that nod. Yeah, that's And that's why I think Lesnar will probably win this matchup. That's annoying. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're you're semi-right, because, I mean, the only wrestler in here that's beaten a guy bigger than him is George St. Pierre. 
Um, yeah, he's the only guy under 205. Or never mind, Ch- oh, Chael's 205 now, so he's the only guy under 205 in this uh, lineup left. left in, yeah, but there weren't a lot of guys under 205, rather, because when the UFC started, because a lot of these guys are also legends, and when the UFC started off, it was just nothing but heavyweight dudes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that, that makes sense, and, and uh, let me see. Yeah, Chris Weidman was 185, and he got beat by Rick Couture. Uh, Demetrius, well, Frank Yeager, helpful. Matt Hughes, Benson Henderson, more so on the left hand, Sean Shirk. Those those guys were under 185, and they're all out. So. Uh, the DJ should have made it way further, I feel. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like I said, I thought he should have beat Brock Lesnar. I uh, thought it was interesting. But Chael Sonnen and Brock Lesnar, get your votes in. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this gets the most votes. Speaking of Sonnen, we came out with a video on the page earlier showing you ooh, the ooh. epic, climactic, most likely fixed fight that was on <laughs> that was on the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. For anybody with the fight pass that had it, they saw it early. And then for everybody that saw it on our page, a lot of people were like, oh, this guy. On... I mean, who knows if it's fake or not? I mean, uh, you and I were arguing, Adam, of le- not the legitimacy of it. I was arguing why you thought it was fake <laughs> more than anything. Uh, you think it's fake just simply because of how it looked. I think it's fake just simply because, uh, well, I don't think it's fake. I haven't given an opinion on it yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's fake simply because of, uh, of the feel of it. But, uh, but you know, w- when it's weird and tense like that, um, who knows? I mean, who really knows? I, I mean, you could just feel like tension watching it. Uh, but I, I was, I, 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 I was surprised that, uh, first off that a coach decided to just, you know, thrash son in the back of the head a few times. Then and bragged then, about it. Then like bra- it was something. Yeah. Know. Like he, like he, and then he ripped his Jersey off. Like you can see on the video that he's ripping his Jersey yeah. off and then he's like still trying to get some punches in, but you I'm then, keep this. <laughs> yeah, with gold. He's like, I'm going home a hero. I punched Sonnen in the back of the fucking head. Yeah. While he was busy fighting the other, like, Vanderlei. Yeah, like he was on top. Yeah, a bunch of dudes on top of him and shit. I don't know. Fucking cares. I mean, you, uh, I was surprised by it. I thought, it, uh, man, that was fucking weird. It was so weird. Uh, but it looked it looked real, and at the same time, there were parts of it that felt not real. So, um, But the, the Andre Dita guy, I think that that part was real. Because who wants oh, to look... Who wants to really look like that in real life? I mean, unless it's real. You know, this isn't yeah, the I WWE. Dita actually did all that stuff. And I mean, I've never been a fan of Dita back when I saw him fight in Dream and K1. Never liked the guy. Always gave him, always gave me a weird vibe. But, I mean, everyone in this whole thing is going to talk about Vandalay the Dick, Vandalay shouldn't have done, blah, blah, blah. Chael is just as guilty, if not more guilty. Chael was, A, the first person to lay his hands on anybody. He was the man who made the shove, and he was the one who started the fight dance pose thing. And Chael was playing this, you know, he we all know what Chael's been doing this entire time. Talking nothing but shit to Vandalay, talking nothing but shit to, you know, the entirety of Brazil. And then all of a sudden he's trying to be nice to him, and I can see why Vandalay be pissed off. Yeah. I, I see every right for Vandalay to be angry. And that Chael's trying to play this nice guy and shake his hand and try to... I mean, it, it was all a mind game, and I think, you know, if it was real... Chael wanted Vandalay to fight him. That's 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 the entire reason for all of that. It's Chael wanted Vandalay to get angry and he wanted Vandalay to fight him. Mm-hmm. And that's where just the whole, like, I mean, a freaking slow-ass open bear slap, that just doesn't seem... I mean, Vandalay is not as fast as he used to be, but he wouldn't slap anyone upside the head if he was going to fight him. He would yeah. throw one of his barraging hooks. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, I mean, I think Vandalay deserves a lot of the blame. But he deserves as much of the blame as Chael deserves, too, and I don't feel Chael's getting enough of the heat for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I I feel it's fifty fifty. I felt like Chael was egging him on. I thought Vanderly was just being stupid to be like as aggressive as he was coming off. You know what I mean? Um, and it looked like Vanderlei said the first thing because I guess he said soon, like whispered it to him, and then Chael's like, "What?" And then he's like, "Soon." Yeah. I don't. I, I, I don't want to talk to you. Just looked so dumb. Like the what? <laughs> He looked awful, and then it was just kind of funny because Shell's like, well, "When are we gonna fight?" And he's just like, "Oh, oh, oh. you know, you know." He just like he wouldn't give an answer. And then they took a break. They didn't talk, and Shell's like, "So but, when are we gonna fight?" But and then what he about just kept the date? 
It's like I don't know he his name. He smacked the yeah. hands like right in front of Shale's face. Shale was threatened. He was a white man in Brazil being threatened. <laughs> <laughs> And the fists went flying, the takedowns are coming. And I, I mean, honestly, it looked like how the fight's going to go down. I mean, Vanderlei's going to swing. Chael is not an idiot. He respects people that he thinks can't, he can't stand with. So he's going to take him down. And whoa. it just looked like how the fight was going to go. Now, I mean, my biggest problem with it was a guy that, like, instead of, like, oh, God, God, grab him, take him off. He's like, oh my god, his back is turned. I'll take two swings at him yeah. and then brag about it and take his jersey off his back. And then starts, like, like it's something to be proud of. Like, basically, that he, this guy that's being preoccupied fighting someone else, I came up from behind and punched him in the back of the head. I'm such a badass. Yeah, so it was just a weird instance. And I don't know. I mean, it didn't even look as good as I thought it was going to look. But it was exciting to watch. It was fun to watch. Thought it was funny after a few after watching it a couple more times. I was just like, "This is so silly. Why is he like talk like, you know?" He's like, "I don't want to talk to you. I don't want I don't to like be your you. friend. I don't like you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want I don't to like be your you. friend. I don't like you. <laughs> and I don't want to like you. And I don't want to be your friend. I'm not gonna shake your hand. I'm not gonna say hi. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It was. It was more. It was the. It was just as entertaining as I felt it would be. So I was like, I, I was totally cool with it. <laughs> Thought it was funny. Thought it was cool. Uh, move on to the next subject here. We actually have a fight car going down later tonight, people. Check it out. It is the Tough Nations finale for anybody that's been watching. Adam, I know you haven't, so you probably will not. I have not no idea who the finale guys are. Uh, <laughs> Elias? No, I don't know. I have no idea who these guys are. Uh, I hear you. It's totally fine. Chris, have you been watching it at all? I've been in and out. The last thing I saw was caging it, knocked the fuck out. Yeah, so this is why I wanted to get fucking Joel and and Blaze on because they've been consistent with it. But uh, they're Canadian, Australian. Yeah, because Blaze yeah. is Canadian and Joel is Australian. Yeah, those are those yeah. guys put a. Yeah, Zach and Joel decided to cease their friendship as they use the key word cease, uh, to, <laughs> to uh until this goes down and just today they were arguing or just yesterday rather they were arguing about Cote versus Kyle Note. We'll start off with the card. The card looks nice. We have a in the preliminary fight pass card Mark Bocek fighting uh, in the pre preliminary card that will be on Fox Sports 1 George Root versus Dustin Kimura. How do you see that fight going guys? Just, we'll kind of run through these. Um, George hmm. Root looks like a fucking skeleton by the way if anybody didn't see at the weigh-ins. Uh, didn't he used to fight 55 and then 45 and then now. Bantam. He's at bantamweight. Yes, he's a tall uh -huh. dude. This is very scary. Ooh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think I see Rube getting this. I mean, he's actually been looking better since he came as of recently, especially since he came down to Bantam. Yeah, and he's taking on a, a, a relative, uh, uh, you know, newbie as Kimura is a, is a young dude. He's only 24. Uh, he has three fights in the UFC. He's two and one, two being submissions. So uh, it's interesting uh, to see him, uh, to see uh, to see this fight go down. Surprisingly, yeah, he doesn't have really, any. Uh, what? Uh, I was just saying. Surprisingly, he has no wins by Kimura, which would be funny. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, George Root probably takes that. Adam, what you think? Yeah, I think Root will win it. Uh, Kimura is not the kind of guy to beat Root. Root is someone who. Uh, he he's he's most uh, susceptible to uh, strikers are good at getting inside and hitting him with his upright style. Yeah, and I I don't really think Kimura is that guy. Kimura's gonna have a little hard time getting inside that reach because Roop can use it well enough against lower level strikers to keep him outside. So I think it'll be a tough night for Kimura. I think Roop will probably win by a second round TKO. Yeah, I'm surprised by this cuz I mean if you watch it it's going to it's going to be interesting uh because uh George Root doesn't have oh well he has one submission loss out of his all of his out of a lot of his losses uh in in under Zufa and one being uh by Kimura <laughs> by George Sotaropoulos at UFC 101 um but yeah other than that all of his all of his losses uh prior to that have been knockouts other than a split decision loss to a uh, Hasu Hiyoki um but yeah, it's usually strikers that tend to really get to him uh, and, and are able to put him away. Uh, I see Roop taking that fight as well. Wouldn't be surprised at all. And then we'll just go to the, the, the other interesting bout of this of the preliminaries, which is Sarah Kaufman versus Leslie Smith. 
Leslie Smith, for anybody that doesn't know, is a fucking banger. That shit brawls just like Sarah Kaufman does. I see this being an exciting ass fight, and I wouldn't be surprised if it gets fight of the night because Leslie Smith just throws down. Uh, if, in fact, in Invicta FC, she has what one, two, three, five, four fight of the night out of her six fights under the Invicta uh, uh, banner. So, so. I feel she should have beat Kaufman the first time they fought. Um. Oh, yeah, they fought uh, Invicta FC 5. I remember that fight. Yeah, I mean, that was close. Yeah, you that was so you close. Were behind Kaufman for that fight, and I, I was really impressed by Leslie Smith that fight. I honestly thought she outpointed her. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I remember that, class, that fight being very close, so I understood the splitness of it. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't remember how I scored it. Um, I'm trying to remember. You had oh. Kaufman winning. I remember you had Kaufman winning, and you were, also, you were also happy that she did get the win. Yeah. I mean, it, it was such a great fight. And Leslie Smith, when she fought ba Jennifer Maya and Barb Honchik right after, I became an even bigger fan of her. And I started watching all the earlier Invictas as well because they, they YouTubed them eventually. Um, and she just, that girl just puts it on you. That girl is goes forward. And Kaufman's very similar in the same instance. So, I mean, they, they fought, yes, uh, before an Invicta. And I feel this rematch will probably also win fight of the night. I mean, I, these girls are bangers, man. So I'm, I'm excited for that fight. Uh, Adam, what do you think? Have you seen? Invicta? Have you seen Invicta, Adam? I don't even know. Yeah, I've seen a couple of Invicta cards. Um, uh, I, I, Invicta hasn't been around. The last event was in December, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been, not. Was yeah. Penny Watterson? No, was that the last one? No, that was like last year in the spring. No, Penny uh, Watterson was April last year. There's been the Cyborg Kunin and uh, the, the main event that actually Leslie Smith was in against Honchak. That was the last event? Yeah, that, I was mean, it? from what I can tell, in December 7th, Invicta 7. That's the yeah, last that might have been it. I mean, uh, yeah, no, there's no, not been an 8th yeah, one yet. Yeah, the 8th next one is to be determined on Wikipedia, which means that it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that's a, yeah I guess so. So, I mean, Invicta, oh wait, no, 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 Invicta announced a card for May. Forgot about that. It just hasn't had any fights added to it yet. Um... But uh, yeah, I'm 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 definitely excited for that. As far as women fights go, that's gonna be exciting as all hell. Strictly because those women throw technique out the window, and I mean there are some women that are technical and fun to watch. Holly Holmes is one of them. But these two just bang. This is gonna be fun to watch. I'm gonna be excited just to watch it. You move on to the main card, you, uh, the Tough Nations main card, which will also be on Fox Sports One. Uh, Dustin Poirier wait, wait, versus. Wait, we're skipping Stout and Noons. Oh, okay. Like well, fine. Fight. Let's talk about Stout and Noons. God damn it! Chris, All right. What's your thing on Stout and Noons, buddy? What? I tell Chris to talk about Stout and Noons. All right, fine. Oh, okay, wait. The now welterweight fight, which I think is a very good sign, especially when both of them are saying that we both know we're not going to make weight for whatever reason, so we want to now bump it up a weight class in the UFC. Give it the okay. I think that's actually a very good move. But I like that a lot. Uh, so the fight doesn't get axed and it still stays on track. I'm, I really, really like that. Between Stout and Noons, it depends on what kind of Sam Stout comes out. Um, you saw in the Fisher fight that he started using a lot more wrestling. He didn't really want to stand as much. and He just wants to vary his attack, which might not be the most exciting thing to watch in the world, but he looked good. Um, against James Krause, he did not look that great. I mean, did he got outstruck, he got subbed, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he barely looks up par against Cody McKenzie. I mean, he obviously won the fight. I know, that's not a good sign at yeah, all. Yeah, but when man. you're fighting Cody McKenzie and you don't just, like, obliterate him, then you got problems, man. You know exactly, I mean? and I think <laughs> KJ Nunes would have definitely obliterated Cody McKenzie with some form of a strike to the stomach. And <laughs> I, just, I just see KJ being on point in this fight. He looked great in the Sadaropoulos fight. I think he could have put him on um, Sam Stout, but I do see him out pointing him to a decision. Yeah, I'm, same here. I mean, I said that opinion earlier when I, when this fight was announced. That I think KJ Noons uh, is the better striker. I mean, Sam Stout has been known as this kickboxer all of his career since he came into the UFC since you know I mean he came at like age 21 or some shit he was very young uh, when he when he joined the UFC and he came in as this, this awesome kickboxer and stuff and I mean his hands are decent I mean they're good they just don't put dudes away you know and um, I don't see him putting KJ away uh, KJ I see being more technical in this boxing aspect I feel him coming inside more so uh, Stout doesn't utilize too many kicks and 
and it leaves Stout kind of throwing wildly while KJ tries to keep some form of technique on the inside. I see him being able to uh, get the points and, and land the better shots that way. So I see him getting the decision. Um, can we move on now, Chris? Can I, yes? I haven't even talked about it yet. Go ahead, Adam. Um, <laughs> couple interesting facts. Uh, Sam Stout is only 29. I know. I find that shocking that he's still only 29. He has all of one knockout victory in the UFC, which is surprising for someone named Hands of Stone. And since the Eves Edwards knockout, he's gone win, loss, win, loss, hey, win, Edwards. loss, win. He's, he's due for a loss. Um, and because of that, I'm predicting he will probably lose to KJ Noons. Um, it, but it, it, it also, I think it depends more on which KJ Noons shows up. There's been KJ Noons that looks like a killer, and there's been KJ Noons that looks like he's just showing up for a paycheck. If the KJ News that wants to fight and wants to hit you shows up, Sam Stout really doesn't have much of a chance, I don't think. And I think that coming off of the win, I'll have that fire of having a win in the UFC. I think he will um, maybe not stop, but have a, put a pretty good beating on Sam Stout. Mm-hmm. We can move on now. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin Poirier versus Akira Korasani. That just, man, I feel... Um, that might be the one fight that has the odds at the highest for, you know, yeah. uh, because it just seems like such a mismatch in my opinion. I mean, I mean, what do you think? I think this is such a mismatch. Oh, definitely. I mean, Akira, had he not gotten somewhat lucky and Blanco got too wild and did that illegal strike, oh, he was so fucked in that match. And that's against <laughs> Maximo Blanco, who I love Maximo Blanco, but, I mean, this is Dustin Poirier now. So he went from fucked to even more fucked. And, I mean, there's got to be some sort of miracle for him to win. I mean, Poirier's got to run at him with his hands down and he puts out a fist or something. I just don't see a way that Akira wins at all and not get finished in the first round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I see... Uh... I see, I see Poirier being able to just kill him on the striking exchanges. Um, I see him, uh, even on the ground, I see him being the better ground fighter. I mean, I just don't see anywhere where Akira has shown that he's better than him in any form of, you know, any stretch of it at all. I just don't see it. Um, but Akira is being optimistic. He's happy that he has this matchup. He believes that it's, 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 it's I mean, it's obviously a huge win for him if he wins because he beats a top 10 ranked dude. Um, so I'd be I'd be very uh, surprised to see him win it. I just don't see it happening, Adam. Since Poirier's UFC debut, there have been zero fights where I have not been impressed with him. Poirier? Even, no, zero, yeah, I've I've always been impressed. Even in his losses to Zombie and Swanson, Swanson on short notice, mm-hmm. I've been impressed by every fight he's had. Yeah, and he's he's you know getting a little older now. He's twenty five. He's starting to grow into his body. And I mean the Coke fight was dominating be- way beyond anything that any of us thought we would see. Brandau, we kind of saw it coming, especially after he missed weight by, like, 85 pounds or something like that. <laughs> and I-, I really don't see much of where the Corsani could win, but this is this is the kind of fight that I don't want... It, it won't break Corsani's career, but if he can beat Poirier, that can, that can skyrocket a guy. That can really throw him up to the next level. Will he do it? Is he yeah. even in the top 15? No, he's not. No, I don't think so. And I mean, his striking's all right. I, I, I'm assuming his submission game is what's better, but it's, I haven't seen a lot of Corsani, honestly. And what I've seen is just none of it's been memorable. Where He barely well, got a split decision I mean, win. He's against good guys. Yeah, he has a DQ win over Maximo Blanco, and then he has two other wins in the UFC, one being against Andy Ogle, which he I don't even thought, I didn't even think he won. I thought Andy Ogle beat him. If you, rem- I don't. I remember that fight. I remember thinking Andy won that fight and got screwed. Um, and not nothing against Andy Ogle, but I just he's nowhere near Dustin's level either. Um, yeah. Uh, and then he beat Robbie Peralta, who's one of those up and comer guys who's very impressive. Uh, he beat him with mo- more of a wrestling styled game. I don't see him out wrestling Poirier at all. So I mean, going off of yeah. what he's done in the UFC, I just there's nothing pointing to Akira winning this fight other than maybe a miracle by the hand of Jesus. So or cheese, it's, you know. So I mean, for those of you who haven't been watching the Ultimate Fighter Nations, our middleweight finale will be against will be Sheldon Westcott versus Elias Teodoro and Chad Lapree versus Olivier Aubin Mercier. I don't know how to say these Canadian names. Blaze would probably say it correctly, but 
uh, those are the fights happening tonight. Uh, the, as far as the finale cards, I won't really speculate too much. I've barely watched it uh, uh, myself until, uh, like, I watched the first, like, five episodes, and then I just got lost uh, eventually uh, within all, all of that. But I know that uh, Elias Diodoro in the middleweight uh, finale uh, is, is definitely shown in pre uh, He finished all his fights. Uh, he's definitely shown to be the more impressive guy. I feel him winning the middleweight uh, tourney, and then I feel Chad Lepree winning the welterweight one. That's just my opinion. I know you guys haven't watched, so I won't ask. We move on to the coaches. Wait, wait, is four Canadians in the finals? Say that again? It's four Canadians in the finals. Fuck this nation yeah. shit. Yeah, exactly. Ha! <laughs> 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 Joel needs to shut up whatever he's talking about. <laughs> I didn't even want to mention that because Joel would have gotten mad at me. But yeah, there's no, there's no. I'm sorry, Australians, but you don't have a guy in the. Finals. You guys suck, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, Joel thought. I mean, it's the the Australians did all right in the uh, the elimination rounds, where the Canadians went five and three. Uh, and then, and then, um, and then, yeah, the Canadians won from there. They didn't win a single thing after that. Um, so I thought that was hilarious. But yeah, I didn't want to mention that. But now that you mentioned it, it's mentioned. So fuck it. My bad. <laughs> I just don't want to hurt Joel's feelings because now he's just gonna be like, "What the fuck, bro?" Yeah. Or I don't know how to do an Australian accent correctly under him, but. That was not even what? No, no, no. That was not even. All right, do it yourself, you faggot, and do it. I can't. I'm sick. Pass. I pass. No. You're sick too. No. Talking shit. Like I know how to do an Australian accent. I'm Hispanic. You can't expect me to do that shit correctly. All you say is good eye, mate, and that's all you do. You move on. Hey, what the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? There. There. You happy, fucker? Well, so it's strong for beer. Yeah, you throw in Australia cut, and that works too. <laughs> We move on to the coaches at welterweight, you fuckers. All right, Patrick Cote versus Kyle Noak. Who do you see? All right, Patrick Cote versus Kyle Noak. Who do you see winning it, the Australian coach or the Canadian coach? By the way, before you guys get started, Cote. Joel feels that uh, Noak knocks out Cote. We're just gonna put Joel's pick in there real quick. <laughs> you feel Cote? Why? I do not see that happening at all. I just, I don't. Noak really hasn't impressed. I mean, he has the one over Brenneman, but other than that, he really hasn't impressed me. Cote, he hasn't been looking as great as of late, but, I mean, this really isn't anything to go off of, but the pictures of him in training, he's looking phenomenal. He's looking great. The one thing that did scare me, though, is when, uh, shit, what's that guy's name? The, the uh, Italian guy that just got cut that was at 145. Wait, uh, Alessio Sakara, um, no. Italian guy. So yeah, Sakara. Um, he got. I mean, had Sakara watched his shots, he would have been TKO'd by Sakara. So that's something that kind of um, scares me a little bit. But I still see him being able to beat Noak. I don't see Noak knocking out Kote. I don't see it at all. <laughs> gotcha. Fuck this nation shit. <laughs> oh, this shit got me going. Uh, I feel Cote gets, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, going off what you said, he's looked impressive as all fuck. He really has. He's just, his, in his training videos that he's put out, and his pictures, he looks fucking shredded. And he's been getting that Muay Thai going. Kyle Noak is uh, generally a, a, a striker that I've seen. He has uh, a good ground game. Uh, like, he tends to strike with guys until he can get it to the ground, and then once he gets it to the ground, he can put dudes away. Like Chris Camozzi. Uh, he, he choked him out, um, and then uh, Charlie Brenneman, he just put him away with strikes. Um, it's really a, 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 a it's really Cote's fight to lose. I feel I feel like he's the more experienced guy, the better the better handed guy standing up. So uh, I feel he beats Kyle Noak where he wants to be good at, but he probably isn't. So I see Cote winning this fight as well. I see Canada just kind of retting through this whole nation's thing. So uh, we'll, Adam, what do you think? This is a weird fight. To be <laughs> um, These are weird I mean, coaches' picks, in my opinion, as well. But I mean, Kote has looked. I mean, he looked pretty good against Conley, even in the loss. I, I, he looked pretty good. The Volker fight, I honestly don't remember all that much, but I remember. I think he was pretty dominant. Um, so I was happy he got a clean win. He busted out his breast. Take it. 
Say that again. Volker. I was saying that he used a pretty good wrestling game plan that I hadn't really seen from him to be yeah. Volker. Well, I mean, before that, I mean, when I followed him in the earlier in his earlier UFC run, his strategy was I'm gonna swing a right hand at your face. That was how he fought. He didn't know any other way. Um, he, he he's mixed it up a lot more since then. Um, and ever since he went to Thailand, Thailand, no lie, he looks like Gokan Saki, like just like him, body physique, head wise. Um, but I just, I mean, I just can't pick Kyle Lowe. I just, I you know, have him in. A, I mean, fuck it, Cote by fucking decision, because I don't know why the hell. I this is a dumb fight. <laughs> you wouldn't be talking about this fight if they weren't coaches. Let's just say that it wouldn't even be on our radar. Yeah, it'd be weird. I mean, it it just feels like an important fight strictly because yeah. they were coaches. So yeah, exactly. If they weren't um, coaches, this would just be like a prelim or on a on a pay per view. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean the only the only way Noke I think has a shot is by a submission. If he can get Kote down, that's gonna have to be later in the fight. I don't I don't. Kote has had a historically good chin. I don't see him dropping or knocking out Kote. Yeah. Um, if he can get Kote tired and kind of lethargic in the third and take him down, I mean, Belcher was able to take him down or late in the first. So it's possible. I just I just don't see it happening. Belcher nearly pile, pile drove that fucker. You remember that? Yeah, yeah I remember that. Spiked him right on his head. Yeah, so, was... I mean, I, I think I think Kote is going to decision him on points or you know, win on points, you know. Stay outside, try to land power shots, but not be able to put them away. Mm -hmm. um, that's you. my pick. Yep, good pick. I mean, I don't fucking argue it. I think we all agree. <laughs> Kote probably takes that. The main event! Michael Bisping versus Tim Kennedy. Woo! God, I hope Kennedy wins, but I see Bisping winning it by... Uh, this is a five-round fight, so I'd probably say a third or fourth round TKO uh, or decision by Bisping. I don't see him taking Kennedy out too early. Kenny Bisping doesn't have those kind of hands where he can just put away dudes early. He's the kind of guy that out cardios dudes. He's got a wicked cardio. I can't deny him that. He's able. He's always able to keep a furious pace in there, and it's always able to tire dudes out. And that's how he gets the TKO. They're just so tired they can barely defend themselves. Um, that's what he did to Mayhem. That's what he's done to many other dudes. Um, I see him being able to do that with Kennedy, but I also see Kennedy putting up a good fight. He just has to come in ready cardio wise. So. Uh, that fight's going. That fight's going on down tonight. Who do you pick, uh, Chris? You can go first this time. Um, honestly, I, I think Kenny is a little overrated. <gasps> I mean, he's, he's got the win over Roger Gracie. How dare so he you? Crushed a can, <laughs> and he's got the win over Natal. So he crushed another can. <laughs> Neither guy in the top fifteen, and now he's getting Michael Bisping because he shot his mouth off. And everyone knows if you beat Bisping, even though oddly enough. I read this article, and it's really shocking. I mean, he only has wins over active fighters in those of Alan Belcher and Yoshihiro Akiyama. The rest of Bisping's wins in the UFC are over guys that are no longer with the UFC. Mm -hmm. But I just don't see Kenny being able to beat him. Uh, Bisping has amazing takedown defense. Yeah. Um, I don't see him being able to take him down. He's got really, really great, uh, crisp striking. Not really a lot of power behind it. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't feel good, but he just, he's not that guy that goes in there and puts guys away really fast. He's just not. He's going to pick him apart standing. Ken, he's going to be swinging and missing. This thing's going to be in and out, in and out. He'll probably TKO him due to exha exhaustion and accumulation of his strikes. So I see it being, like you said, a late TKO. Fans don't or pick against Bisping just because they don't like him. They don't really think about it. And I can I just see Bisping getting a late TKO on uh, Kennedy. Yeah, I see this. Uh, I mean, believe it or not, Kennedy actually has a loss to Jason May and Miller. Um, but I, I mean, unless Kennedy can land a, uh, a, a the kind of punch he landed on the tall, but maybe a little harder, <laughs> uh, then, uh, <laughs> then I don't see him winning it. But I mean, I'd be surprised. But I mean, Kennedy's got a good, you know, good resume thus far. He's been in there with guys like Ronaldo, Jacare Souza, and Luke Rockhold, and, and th even those guys couldn't finish him. Matter of fact, uh, the only the Tim Kennedy hasn't he's lost never a fight. Been stopped. Say it, what? He's never, he's been, never sto been stopped. He's been was, stopped in his very injury. first fight. That was, his very first fight was the only fight he's ever been stopped at, which was in that was an injury. 
Yeah, and that was in 2001. I, I have not... I, why don't I know that he's been fighting that long? Oh, well, I mean, he took a time period off from 2003 to 2006, probably due to active duty uh, reasons. Um, uh, I see that... Uh, I see him, you know, that he's very experienced, obviously, um, but, and he's fought in some top names. You know, he's been in there with Melvin Manhoof, Robbie Lawler, Luke Rockhold... He actually beat Robbie Lawler, but I mean that was back when Robbie wasn't at the at the at the level he's reached now. Um, uh, he's he's got he's got impressive wins. I see it being possible. I just think uh, it would need to be by 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 setting up the right kind of knockout punch. Uh, yeah, like you said, I don't think he takes him down. I don't think he uh, can can uh, keep up that kind of pace that Bisping plans on bringing to him. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I would be shocked if Kennedy controls Bisping. Um... Kennedy's takedowns in the top game are not bad. He was able to take down uh, Jock Gray a couple times. I think I remember he was able to take down Rockhold. He beat Manoff on the ground. He beat Lawler on the ground. He beat Gracie on the ground. Um, if I remember, he also had Natal on the ground before he knocked him out standing. Um, and Kennedy is one of those guys who also has very good cardio. I mean, he's gone five rounds before and looked good at the end of the fight. Um... Will he beat Bisping? If I had to put my money on either guy, I'd put it on Bisping. But just, I mean, I, I'm, I agree with Chris. I don't think Kennedy's as high up there as some other people do. But don't sleep on him in this fight because this is the kind of fight that could, you know, that could set Bisping back in a wrestler who can put him down, keep him down, keep up with his pace. Mm -hmm. And it'd be interesting to see. But I, I also think that Kennedy... Or, uh, Fishing will volume punch him to a decision. Yeah, that's what I figure. Talk about it enough. Fans, go see it tonight. It'll be on tonight. Uh, mm. I really hope that Kennedy can pull the upset. That's for me. That's just all what I hope. <laughs> we'll actually start now recapping what happened last Friday uh, on the Ultimate uh, Fight Night 39 in Abu Dhabi. Just real quick. What a sick knockout. Doosh. Yeah. Kind of how we figured it. You guys, actually, you and Blaze actually predicted it correctly. You figured Roy Nelson yeah. and uh, Roy Nelson and would get the knockout in round one. Were you heartbroken like I was? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I, I was disappointed, but I kind of saw it coming. Yeah. Um, it kinda was after to. that fight where I, I mean, I've looked it up, and it's just a rumor that Jordan Breen started. So how reliable is it? But apparently, Nogueira has vision problems in his left eye. Um, that being said, what I said before the fight is, Nogueira is a guy who stands in front of his guy flat-footed and he's easy to hit. That's Taylor made for Wayne Nelson to knock him out. Unfortunately, that's what happened. And I thought Nogueira had a good game plan. He was keeping his distance. He was jabbing. He was keeping Wayne Nelson away from him as much as he could. But his body just doesn't hold up anymore. And that's what it comes down to. He, he, in, his, in his mind, everything I think was right for this fight. Just his body, his slowness. His lack of defensive ability anymore and his lack of ability to take a solid punch, it just doesn't work for, you know, he just can't hold up with him anymore. Yeah, I was, I was bummed to hear it. He says he wants one more fight with Frank Mir. I doubt it happens. I mean, there's really no reason to make that fight anymore. I mean, but I can understand why he wants that fight, too, with the way that, I mean, the first staff infection, throw that one out, you know. But the second fight, had he not been an idiot and he let his pride get in the way and try to submit Frank Mir, he beats him. He pounds him out. Yeah. Man, uh, I can see why he wants that fight, and honestly, both fighters have looked very damn awful lately. <laughs> so, so he has a chance. That's <laughs> right there. I mean, it's the last five strikes gets green. Say that again? What? Chris, what Oh, I mean? was saying that Frank Mir landed five strikes within 15 minutes against Alistair Overeem. Yeah, that's something like that. That's due to Alistair being Alistair on the feet. You know, what I mean, he can't. He wasn't letting Frank Mir do shit on the feet. Yeah, that's no, it. Yeah. Can. Say that again. Yeah, he did. He did get him down on the ground, which that impressed me. But um, kind of going back to the um, beginning, going back here, um, that fight was extremely predictable for me. I I just saw uh, Big Country knocking out Big Nog. Big Nog, he got rocked twice before getting knocked out. I believe. Had not picked up that um, those hands to defend his face at all, which I mean that's that's just a big no no when you don't want to get hit in the face, and then he just got 
he just got knocked the fuck out, and it was it was awful. I mean, he was stiff as a board before he even hit the ground, and Roy Nelson was walking away before he even hit the ground. Yeah. And apparently, Roy Nelson broke his hand too, so that might put a little bit of a um a little bit of time for him to have to heal before we see him back in there. But Nog saying he wants another match against uh, Mir, and Barnett even saying that he wants another match against Nog. First off, I think Barnett's shooting a little low there. Um, yeah. I don't think they should book that fight at all because Barnett destroys him. Uh, against Mir, that fight semi makes sense because Nog is on what a two fight losing streak now. Yes, for the first time in his career, actually. Yeah, a two fight losing streak, and Mir is on a four fight losing streak, and. Oh, I don't know. That could be tough. I mean, if Mir can't beat Nog again, then he should retire. Um, if Nog can't beat Mir, then I, I, I don't know. Because Mir finished retire. Nog. Too. What were you huh? saying, Adam? Both men should retire after that fight, I think. I think that should be their going out fight. I, would, I, I don't want to see if either of those guys fight anymore. Yeah, I mean, they should like both, just, like, they should both take the mic to... after that fight, whoever wins, and just say, I'm done. And then you're like, you know what? I'm done, too. Fuck it. Yeah. Get the fuck out. You and me. Nobody can beat us. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, yeah, I was bummed to see it, but it was as predictable as it could have been. I thought it would have ended a lot sooner, or not sooner, uh, later in the fight. But, uh... So we'll move on next to the, uh, uh, just real quick, you wanted to comment on the Clay Guida Kawajiri fight. That was an awesome fight. Uh, I thought uh, uh, Clay Guida calling out uh, Conor McGregor was kind of silly, but at the same time, it's actually good for the UFC because they were going to, like, rumors have been spewing everywhere about Conor McGregor taking on Cole Miller at, at, um, at what's it called, at, uh, at the Irish, UFC. Event. yeah, the UFC yeah. Ireland. Uh, fight pass card going on later on this year. Uh, I think that fight is, uh, you know, makes better, makes much more sense uh, for a guy headlining a card. I don't think Connor deserves it, but if he's going to headline a card, it makes sense, better sense to do it against Col- uh, Clay Guida than against Cole Miller. So, um, uh, and I feel Clay Guida fucks his shit up in that fight as well. By the way, what do you think? Um. I got to agree. I mean, Connor, I like Connor, but he's been talking a lot of shit when he really has no place to do so. And Clay Guida, I mean, it really didn't make sense for him to call out Connor, but at the same time it did. I mean, Clay Guida, if he beats him, he beats someone he's supposed to be, but he also beats a name, like someone everyone's talking about, which I do see him being him just by controlling him with his wrestling. Connor, if he beats Clay, then he backs up everything he's been saying, pretty much for the most part. I mean, he's been saying he can. Like, all those basic and all this and that. But, I mean, if he beats Clay Guida, he's pretty much in, like, at least the top eight, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, he's ranked. Uh, where's Clay ranked at? Let me look up here because I don't remember. Uh, I know we're talking. 12. Say that again? I didn't hear what you said, bro. Whoever said anything. Probably 12. Connor's 13. Clay Guida is 8. See, so that makes yeah. sense. It's two ranked dudes. Cole Miller's not ranked at all. So, I feel that makes... So, you want to put thir- ranked 13 Conor McGregor against a nobody. I mean, to Ireland, that makes sense because it's fucking Ireland. So, I understand why he's headlining it. But give him somebody that makes it fair, you know, competitive. Makes it intriguing. Makes like makes it so that that win means something. If you're going to put him as a headline. Clay Probably his best performance... In a long time since he fought a uh, Gomi, and before that, I mean, he hadn't looked good until the before the Nate Diaz fight. So there's been a long time where Guida hasn't looked as good as he had in the past. And against Kawajiri, I thought he he was exciting for the first time. I feel in a long time, not only exciting, but his his um, game plan was very sound, and it was he he uh, uh, executed the game plan very well. Kawajiri, you know, he had his. He clearly had what he wanted to do. That when Clay Guida's back, go for Kimura, end up on top. He was sweeping off that Kimura all the time, and uh, the second and third round, especially in the third, he was getting in control of uh, Kawajiri. His cardio was also, as always, impressive. But his ability to hold the striking later in the rounds looked good as well. Um, that was a lot of incoherent babbling on my part. But what I'm saying is. <laughs> In that fight, looked better than he has since about 2011. 
And that's good coming into a fight against someone that the UFC clearly is invested in in Conor McGregor. If he beats Guida coming off of a good-looking fight, that does a lot more for him than if he looks crappy against Kawajiri. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, you know, I mean, Clay has definitely showed that he still has some time left uh, to fight. He's not showing like he's slowing down at all. He, I, I, I wouldn't say, uh, well, I mean, he did look good against Tuck and Origomi. That was his best performance. He did look good against Pettis, but he, he looked how he should have looked against uh, somebody that he beat. Um, what else? Uh, other than that, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, since Nate Diaz in 2009, he hasn't looked as good either. I mean, his win over Hatsi Hiyoki has been questioned. Uh, the Rafael Dos Anjos one was an injury win. The Shannon Gugarty win was against a guy who, you know, nobody knew. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it was an impressive win. Tatsuya Kawajiri uh, put up a good, valiant fight. I hope to see him again. Uh, he's exciting to watch, obviously. The rest of the card folded very well. Uh, but th there was one thing. I don't know if you saw it. Did anybody, uh, did you see the first fight of that night, uh, Adam. No, the one that almost broke out into a brawl or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fucking insane. I would just put that real quick in here. Johnny Bet, like, for anybody that didn't oh, was see that, it. Oh, was that the headbutt? Yeah, so Ronnie Yaya and Johnny Bedford come out. They start exchanging. Bedford is coming forward, trying to be the aggressor. Uh, and then, uh, he, like, Ronnie Yaya comes in for a counter, like, to, to duck under and counter, but as he's ducking, uh, Johnny kind of threw, like, a, a overhand right, so they hit heads, like, they were moving their heads downward, and as they're both moving their heads downward, they clashed, and Yaya actually went down, Johnny was fine, and he just went on to continue striking at him, uh, until the referee stopped it, that led a lot of people to believe that it may have been a TKO, and then you watched, and like even the commentators didn't know it was a headbutt until you watched the replay. The replay showed it. Like it, was, it happened so fast, you didn't know it was a replay watching it. So then you you see the replay and you wonder what are they going to call this? Is this a TKO win or are they going to like uh, call it a no contest? Sure enough, Johnny's sitting there thinking that he won the fight, and he puts his hand up once once Buffer starts talking. Like he's just like, yeah, I won that and shit, and looking all silly. And then uh, he because of no contest, Belf, uh, Bedford starts losing his shit. He's like. What the fuck? I knocked him out. I knocked him out. And then Dan Hardy gives him the mic. Dan, uh, he says, I don't know what that's about. I, you know, I came here to fight. I put on a good fight. I put him down. I had him hurt, and I got on top of him, and I, and I, and I thought I finished the fight. And, uh, and then Dan Hardy asked, did you know when the headbutt happened? He's like, I don't even think that that's what happened. I and then, which was weird, because we all just saw that it was a headbutt, and he's denying it to a sense. But he's like, I came here to fight. Abu Dhabi, thank you. Da, 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 da. And then uh, Dan then takes the mic, gives it to Ronnie, and he asks him his opinion. He's like, uh, you know, I don't, you know, it hurt, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm ready to fight if we could fight again. And then Bedford, like, takes the mic, and it says, let's fight right now, dude. It's like a, a rematch. Rematch right now. Who wants a rematch? Da, 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 da. I knocked him out. I'll knock you out again, dude. Da, 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 da. And then, uh, and then he, Ronnie got, like, upset with that, got all up in his face, and then they're, like, kind of just, like, putting face-to-face -face on each other, and it just looked like it was going to turn into something, and then, like, when people are grabbing him, it turned into a, like, hold-me-back kind of deal, where each guy's, like, trying to get close to each other but not do anything. It was kind of weird, but, uh, I thought that that was the weirdest, uh, most entertaining outside of fight, uh, kind of, most entertaining kind of thing to have watched. Uh, it was really weird to see him fold, um think they should make that rematch though it looked it was interesting to see um to to see that happen especially when yaya and, and bedford were just kind of it happened 40 seconds in so if they make the rematch it makes sense uh another key thing on the card talus lady's got a tko victory holy shit you know <laughs> um other than that the fight card was entertaining i i, I liked it it was fun to watch i, I have fun watching these, these ufc fight night events now that i have the fight pass and i can hook it up to my tv just like Blaze has it, I don't think everybody has it like that, but try and get that set up. It makes it a lot more fun to watch um, for anybody listening. Just, you know, it's it's definitely makes a difference in your experience watching it, especially even in the morning. You can just, like, eat breakfast in bed and watch it on TV. It's fucking dope. It's pretty fun. Now, before we move on, I just want to say something quickly. LaFleur versus Howard, awesome fight. I was impressed by both those guys. And honestly, it, that's the kind of fight I want to see, which is kind of sad, because I don't think we're going to be talking about that fight for a very long time. I mean, it's kind of already disappeared in the wind, but that was a really good fight. It I was a like good fight, but it, it, it was it was a good fight, but it was eclipsed by the fact that uh, uh, LaFleur needs Howard's balls into his rectum. 
So, yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, it was it was a fun fight. It was a good fight. I thought when that fight happened, it wouldn't have been surprised if it was fight of the night. And then Clay Guida and Cavajiri happened, and it kind of blew it out of the water. Um, yeah, I think LaFleur is one of those guys that's just flying under the radar that no one really appreciates. But, I mean, he's getting some serious wins over people like Howard and Court McGee, and he's looked nothing but great. You can chalk that up to his lack of finishes, probably. Yeah, I mean, he's got nothing but decisions thus far in his 4-0 in the UFC. But Once he gets a me, finish... they've been exciting. They've been good matches. He wasn't just holding them down or just striking. Well, I, I agree, I agree. But for highlight packages, when you're trying to sell a guy, a knockout or a submission really helps. And it's hard to sell a guy when all of his wins are on decision. Yeah, but I mean, that said, but, I've also thought all of his fights are very good and very entertaining to watch. Which is why his name still sticks out to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I would still be excited to watch him. Hopefully, they match him up with something uh, entertaining, just like this fight was. Uh, Howard put up a good fight. Um, he's asking for a rematch. I hope it doesn't happen. Um, strictly because he he blames the nut shot for the loss. But yeah, yeah, who cares? We we'll move on. We got a bit, We had a bit of news that broke down last week. We it took us forever to finally get to it. But Ronda Rousey versus Alexis Davis. Uh, I'm glad that it's not Gina Carano. Uh, at the same time, it's like kind of weird that it's Alexis Davis, but you know she's earned it. She's she. Those two are the only two women that are three and zero in the UFC with uh, uh, as far as like undefeated records and and three fights in total. Anyway, um, so I'm excited for that fight. Uh, I think uh, Ronda Rousey subs her uh, first round, second round, maybe second round because Alexis looks at least decent, but she's shown me nothing to say. That she can't, that she'll be able to, uh, you know, not get subbed. What do you think, Adam? I'm asking uh, I, Adam I, first because Chris is going to argue with me, but I, I'll wait for that. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been like what I've been seeing from Davis. Or, or, I mean, earlier on, she was more of a submission fighter. L- lately, she's been um, putting up more of a striking contest against some girls, but uh, if it, when it comes down to Rousey, Rousey's going to take you down. There's nothing you can do about that. Rousey's going to take you down. And the problem with Davis is she's going to be okay with fighting on the ground. That's, that's her comfort zone. Big mistake because she's fighting around a Rousey. She's mm-hmm. a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but it's, just, it's a black belt versus a Judo Olympian who has shown no chinks in her submission armor yet. So I, 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 I also think that it's probably going to be a first-round submission win for Rousey. But it's a solid matchup, and I like the fact that they gave it to the deserving girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it's very rare these days that they give it to the person who, who's who's most deserved it. Uh, exactly, it didn't just go to the person running their mouth the entire time. Yeah, exactly. Davis, I mean, I mean, if if there's a time for Alexis Davis to run her mouth, it's now. Now that she has the title shot, stop talking shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> start making this fight sellable at the same time. You know, you want yeah. people to watch it. Uh, I, I I want people to watch it. I like I, I want Ronda Rousey to succeed, so I want to see that fight happen. Sarah McMahon talked absolutely no shit, and I felt that that kind of did something for the fight in a negative aspect. But um, that being said, that card's being headlined by Weidman and Machida. Yeah, how much telling do you? That's mean? right. I freaking forgot. <laughs> Why did I think that was the main event? Yeah, it's the uh, co-main no, event. No, probably because they had to move Weidman and Machida to that to that event. Oh, and it has Sun and Juan, so it's gonna sell. That yeah, it's gonna sell. That's right. I, I mean, that's, that's probably the- that that makes the most sense now that I think about it. If it's gonna have all those stars on the fight card, putting Alexis Davis on a pay per view for a title fight makes a much more sense now. Even though, you know, you may not call it the biggest draw. A lot, a lot of fans secretly, you know, not secretly, but there, there's been quite a few fans we've seen on our page that have just said, you know, she deserves it. And uh, so I'm glad that that uh, the, the most deserving fighter, I believe, uh, is getting the next fight. That Isn't being that said, also Expo weekend. Say that again. Isn't that also on Expo week? It is yes. July 5th, I believe. That that card's gonna do just fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just like last year and the year prior. So I mean, uh, you don't have Anderson Silva selling it, but when you have Chris Weidman selling it, the fucking American Dream over there, getting it done, it'll sell. Especially when but you this have. This also interesting from the Weidman standpoint. This is the first time he's got to sell a fight on his own without Anderson Silva. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, this wow, fight, wow, this wow, fight wow. would have done magnificent if Vitor was still on the card. But and I'm not saying that that means that Machida is less of a draw. It's just because it's Vitor and 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 Weidman with Vitor looking Vitor's as good a as he's looking. Say that again. 
Zitor's a long-time staple, and therefore a lot easier to sell. So is Machida, in a sense. Just, he doesn't go as far back. Yeah, that and just Vitor, the way Vitor looked last year, it's just so many people were thinking this guy's the guy to do it. Machida yeah, could be confused. the guy to do it, but I don't think he's the guy to do it. But we'll talk about that for another day. As far as Ale uh, Alexis Davis, Ronda Rousey, I'd predict uh, round two submission on Bart. Chris, um, what do you think? Me. I see Rousey beating Alexis Davis. I do. I like Alexis Davis. I actually thought that, I don't know, I could have seen Jessica I possibly beating Alexis Davis. I mean, I, gave, I still gave it to Alexis Davis, but Jessica I gave her one hell of a fight, and I just I don't see Alexis being able to beat Rousey. That being said, what I do have to say against you guys, though, is that I actually don't see Rousey subbing Alexis Davis. I mean, How maybe I'm you. taking that jiu-jitsu black belt a little too far. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't see her subbing Alexis Davis. I'm very curious to see what's going to look like standing, though. I'm very curious to see that. Um, I still see Rousey being her. I just, I'm unsure if it's decision or if it's, uh, you know. I mean, she's working with those California dudes, so she's working with Jake Shields, so maybe she will knock her out. I don't know. <laughs> who does she train with you, I don't know who she trains with I mean she's trained with Edmund but I mean she's also friends with Diaz bros who's friends with oh Jake yeah yeah Shields. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, for some reason I thought you were talking about Alexis Davis I was like what um, <laughs> but Alexis Davis who does she train with I'm actually eager to know I kind of want to know she trains under Caesar Gracie J oh wait yeah <laughs> she's a Gracie Jiu Jitsu that's funny no she has a black belt under Caesar Gracie uh oh, Jake's gonna have to choose. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I didn't even know that. Did you know that? I had no clue. Yeah. Oh shit! Did we lose Adam? We did. That sucks. Yeah, he just Fans, had to leave. we're having technical difficulties. We'll pause the podcast from right here, and we'll get back to you in just a sec. All right, we got that fixed. Fight fan. Sorry about that. Adam Ooh. Carr just threw a b fucking bomb on me. What? She's dating Apparently, who? There's a rumor that uh, Brendan Schaub, not the football player. And Ronda Rousey are dating because there was pictures of them in Costa Rica together. They um, were there for a wedding. So, what? They were there for a wedding. Uh, for Yeah, for Henry Gracie, I know. Yeah. Uh, but Front Row Brian also says that they are dating, too. He's hit or miss. I, I wouldn't put too much into it. Uh. And honestly, those two douchebags deserve each other if it's true anyway. No one likes <laughs> Oh, man. That breaks my heart. Oh, man. That breaks my heart. I'm such a... Um, uh, I know. Brennan's Robert's huh? sexy piece. Oh, fucker. I hope she breaks his arm. Anyway, or his dick. One of the two. Uh, <laughs> the man, we heard from a podcast that he did on the Joe Rogan Experience that he's apparently going to do another jiu-jitsu competition. Ugh. Why? Oh, Who would invite him? <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why? I know. Fuck. Even I'm just like, no, no, no. Just No. Just no. Just no. He doesn't I need to do want, that. I kind of want them to put him against one of the Mendez brothers. See how he hangs with that. Uh, that would be hilarious to watch. I want to see him against somebody who can catch him and just strangle him to death. I don't know. But, I mean, uh, shit. I mean, if he does it, don't watch his bout. Just, like, go and take a taco break or something. I don't know. On order the pay-per-view for that fight, then reorder it after it's done. Yeah, That's my I, I, I don't know which competition. It's, it. Yeah, I don't know which competition Brendan Schaub will be competing in, but... Uh, I just hope it's not Metamorris. I really hope that they learned a lesson there with him. <laughs> but Because yeah. uh, um, Metamorris is fun, but his one of the most boring matches that they had was his match. Well, against... well Met 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 Metamorris, too, is a bit of a mistake, uh, adding judges to it. Um, the fact that it's um, either submit or it's a draw actually helps Metamorris. And it'd be interesting to see how we do under that kind of um, scenario. But, yeah, I just don't want to see him back there. He had one shot and the <sighs> Yeah, I mean, obviously he's he's got good jits, but I mean, I just hope not, it's because I mean he he tapped out Matt Schaub, which you don't have to have good jits to sub him, but I mean, uh, it's just impressive enough. Tapped out who? Against Matt. Oh shit, Matt Mitrione. <laughs> you did it too. Fuck! 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 Fuck. <laughs> How dare I? <laughs> Son of a bitch. All right. This is your fucking fault, Adam. All right. I, 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 I take the blame. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, uh, God, fucking help us. Um, but I, I, I think uh, Shop should just stick to MMA. 
Mark Hunt has surprisingly been calling that dude out. Do you know that? Aren't they kind of in preliminary agreements to fight? No, Schaub did, then Mark Hunt replied. Say that again? Schaub called him out, then Mark Hunt replied. Oh, and now Mark Hunt's just like, give me that fucking fight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then Schaub said something about, like, if I knock you out, I get your purse. And then Mark Hunt said something about, well, I, you can be my first submission win in the UFC. And then yeah. Schaub said that if you submit me, you'll get my purse. That'd be interesting. I doubt Hunt submits Schaub. <laughs> I me. highly uh, fucking doubt Schaub can knock out Hunt. <laughs> yeah, see? There you go. That's, an, uh, that's a fair bet. Uh, I think that that's a fun fight. I'm excited for it. Um, I think that we're going to, I think all together that, that uh, this 175 card is going to be exciting as hell. So I'm excited. Ronda probably gets that round two. What do you think, uh, Adam? Uh, it's the first round submission. For Rousey, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, really? Alexis Davis, first round submission, Harbor. Yeah. Oh, oh. Alright, now what's your series wait. prediction? Say that again? Uh, Alexis Davis, first round submission, leg block. Oh, shit. Oh, leg what lock. the fuck? Really? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Did you just say Alexis Davis, leg lock? Uh, yeah. Watch happen. Watch me pull some Bigfoot over him shit again. Oh, get the fuck out of here. That is just, no, just no. I mean, it's one thing when we're all united in thinking that fucking Chris Weidman can do it, but okay, it's not happening with Davis. It's not. It's just not. We weren't united when I picked Bigfoot having a comfort. I, I said, a, hey, I said that that, not, that would be insane and I want it to happen. I was like agreeing with you in that fight, but Jesus Christ, nobody even thinks Davis is going to win that fight. I mean, if I mean, there are some hardcore fans of hers, maybe Canadians that don't think she's going to win. She's not going to win. She's not. Ron, if, if nobody I'll beats her. I'll shit my dick if that's... Say that again? I'll shit my dick if she subs her with a leg lock in the first round. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! You will have like, you, dude, just bet like five bucks on that, uh, anywhere, and then you'll make like at least five grand somewhere. You just oh, that'd be nuts. <laughs> just so you know, Alexis Davis is a feared leg lock specialist with zero leg lock wins. So you got a really good shot here, dude. <laughs> uh, that'd be, that'd be yeah. just insane. I doubt it though. Like I said, I doubt it. But uh. We move on now. We'll talk about the uh, this weekend. We have a UFC on Fox card going down. I'm excited about it. No, me too. It looks it's really good. It's an awesome fucking card. Holy shit. If you look at the card, it's fucking insane. Um, it's probably the best one they put on since the last Chicago card, since uh, the Fox 6 in Chicago. When it yes. was uh, Justin Dodson, Rampage, Shashara. Yeah, going down in Orlando, fucking Florida. We have the main in the undercard just looks stacked as well. We have Jordan Mean making his comeback since last year after getting injured. Jorge Masvidal versus Pat Healy. That's a very good uh, banger banger showdown Ooh, right there. Be. Huh? Who said what? I said that'll be a great one. Yeah, that's uh, gonna be a great Pat one. Healy Tiago Alves. Pat Healy versus Masvidal. As uh, wait, what? Hello? Dude, <laughs> stop fucking. When I say hello, I say some shit. <laughs> hello? Okay. Yeah, Horace Bay Mouth. I'm still here, right? Yeah, you're still here. Oh, Is... Go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jorge Mouth. Mas... I said that Mazda versus Healy will be great. And then ever since Healy got, he had to go and smoke the devil's lettuce and get his one amazing win taken away from him against Miller. He just has not been looking that great. Yeah, that's a, that's interesting. That's gonna be a great card. Um, right, we'll, we'll count it down right now. Jorge Masvidal versus Pat Healy. That's gonna be a great one. Tiago Alves making his comeback um, against uh, South Pazinski. Uh, it's a good fight, decent fight for Alves to come back. Is definitely, I mean, uh, him coming against coming back against somebody like top ten. What? It's been two or four years since he last fought. Yeah, it's been a while. So to see him come back, going down this weekend, that's really under the table kind of deal right now that Tiago Alves is coming back. Um, this weekend, holy shit. Everybody, get your, get you know get ready for that one. That's a fun one. Rafael Dos Anjos, uh, top 10 ranked lightweight, taking on Khabib Nurmagomedov. That's on the fucking prelims? How dare they? Seriously? Yeah, that should be above Brad. T the the main card will be uh, starting off with Brad Tavares, Yoel Romero. All props to Yoel Romero and Brad Tavares. They're also they're both top uh, top fifteen ranked. But Khabib Nurmagomedov and Rafael Dos Anjos are both uh, um, are both uh, top ten ranked. 
So they should probably be on the main card. I, I don't agree with the, the setting of this card. But, man, uh, that's a, a Khabib Nurmagomedov. Anytime you have him on the card, it's going to be fun to watch. That dude uh, has been um, the guy to watch. I feel if he beats uh, a top 10 in Dos Anjos, uh, he has a very strong case for a lightweight title shot. Brad Tavares taking on Yoel Romero to start off the main card here on Fox. Donald Cowboy Cerrone taking on Edson Barboza. Oh, fuck. That's such a good fight. Oh, it's such a good fight. And then you have on the co-main event, Misha Cupcake Tate, or Takedown Tate, whatever she wants to go by, taking on Liz, Girl, Rilla, Carmouche. Carmouche. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the main event, Fabricio Verdum, number two in the world, taking on number three in the world, Travis Brown. Winner gets the bragging rights to take on Cain Velasquez. Later on, the other admins have argued that will probably be, also be the aligning coach with Cain Velasquez on the Ultimate Fighter uh, Latino or so whatever the fuck they're calling it. Um, I'm excited for that fight, guys. I actually have to bounce, guys. So we're, we'll do this another time. Uh, it was great talking to you guys again. Episode five, guys. Please give us your uh, your comments. What, what what fight are you most excited for on this Fox card, though, uh, Adam? Uh, Barboza versus Cerrone. Shockingly, this is Barboza's first time on the main card since he wheel kicked Harry Adam. So I'm excited to see him back there, and you know that's going to be a good fight. Yeah, that's good, man. I'm so excited. Donald Cerrone, Edson Barbosa. That fight, that fight has me. That fight has me by the balls. I'm gonna be so excited for that fight. I'm a big Cowboy fan. I'm also been a big Edson fan. So Jesus Christ, that fight is amazing. Uh, secondary to that, I have to say Dos Anjos and Nurmagomedov. I've become a big fan of Nurmagomedov. Um, so I, I, I'm excited for that fight. And then third behind that would be the, the heavyweight fight in the main event. And then, uh, you know, everything else follows. I'm excited to see Tate back. I'm a fan of hers, but we'll see what happens with that women's fight. It's almost kind of a unrelevant fight, to be honest, because of the fact that they're both coming off losses. But um, well, both of them might almost be a must win. Uh, Tate was robbed. Tate, yeah, Tate doesn't have a Tate was robbed. <laughs> Tate doesn't have a win in the UFC yet, and Liz Carmouche uh, is one and two. So, uh, yeah, big, big, big fight for both women. Um, I gotta bounce yeah, out of here, guys. Wasn't title picture, but say that again. I said for job security more than the title picture, but it's a big fight for the two. Yeah, that, that's why it's not high on my list of priorities of watching this. Uh, but I'm excited for it. Fight fans. Oh, it'll be a great fight. It'll be a great fight, and I'm sure I mean, it will be. If Tate goes zero and three. Oh, that'll be scary. But yeah. I mean, for me, the most exciting one's going to have to be Khabib versus Dos Anjos. I cannot believe that's not on the main card. Yeah. And secondary is Travis Brown versus Fabricio Verdum because someone's getting finished. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if someone gets finished in that. I also would would be I would be surprised if someone doesn't get finished in Cerrone versus Barboza. That's going to be a fight where both guys are just going to I I you know what? I'm scared though is just because of Adam posting up this fucking post on her page about leg breaks. These guys throw leg kicks for days. I'm so scared they're going to break something off each other's leg. I'm so scared for that right now. <laughs> But it, that that's that's that fight has me. That's my that's been since it was announced. I've been eager to see it. Now that it's come, I'm excited as fuck. Fans, tonight the Ultimate Fighter Nations goes down. Michael Bisping takes on Tim Kennedy. The Ultimate Fighter Nations will be headlined all by Canadians uh, for the middleweight and welterweight title of the Tough Nations uh, winner. Definitely an exciting card. Check it uh, this weekend. UFC on Fox. Hopefully, we'll get another podcast going where we can review. All the fights here. We gotta, we gotta shut this bitch off. I gotta head somewhere, guys. I was excited to have you on again, Chris. You're always as exciting as usual, Adam. I know you were sick, but you were fun as hell, man. Appreciate you both. Sign off, you guys. Ready? Oh yeah, fine. Yeah. All right. See you guys next pod. <laughs> next pod, Adam. Peace appreciate out. you guys. Peace out, MMAD fans. Leave your comments, concerns.